Archaeology. Finding ancient human past life and studying the relics one finds is fascinating. Archaeologist. Professor Rex Cameron. My arse. I've made a career of travelling around the world, taking on challenges from people about the relics they present me with. The longer I looked at the picture on the poster in the hotel foyer, the more convinced I was that I knew Professor Rex Cameron. I thought I knew his face when he checked in. It's a great life, turning up at the poshest hotels, having reserved the best suites available. And the women, <laughs> well, I can't resist them. Just a bit of fun, no harm intended. He was older looking, of course, and he'd piled on the pounds. The long hair tied back into a ponytail and the bandana he used to wear around his head was gone. They'd been replaced by a white fedora, which he never took off in public. Take the time I spent in hell on Grand Cayman. At the hotel, I asked the manager where the best place was to meet ladies in hell. Did they frequent the hotel bars, and if so, which ones? He reminded me, in his holier-than-thou attitude, that the hotel was not that sort of place, that it was a respectable conference hotel, and I should do well to remember it. <laughs> Sexy Rexy. <laughs> That's what the other inmates used to call him. They swore that with his pale freckled skin and slim frame, from the back, when he untied his hair and let it fall over his shoulders, he could pass for any of the wives and girlfriends waiting on the outside for them. Jumped up little squirt. I don't know who he thought he was. Just a bloody hotel manager in tourist ridden hell. He reminded me of someone, but I, I couldn't place him. Whilst he was being detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, he was petrified of being jumped on. That's where I came in. I used to protect him. I was his guardian angel in those days. <laughs> I'd make sure I was outside the shower block when he took his shower, and that he was never alone during exercise or free time. I made sure to let that jumped up little squirt know at every available opportunity that I was the one paying his wages and he was there to cater for my every whim. I started calling him Basil Faulty just to annoy him. <laughs> Did the trick every time. <laughs> He'd occasionally pay me with fags his visitors had brought him. But he always promised he'd repay me properly for my services. Once she was out. At my show, I would guess if the pieces people brought me were genuine or fake. I was renowned for my knowledge of artifacts from the Caribbean. He didn't recognise me when he checked in. Well, it had been 25 years or more since he'd seen me. And I've changed quite a bit since then. I'd put some weight on too. But it was all muscle. I'd spent all my free time at the hotel gym. Nothing else to do in hell. And I'd grown some facial hair, which I didn't have in those days. He owes me, and I reckon it's time to call him what he promised. If I was proved wrong, I would pay a hundred dollars to whoever brought the piece. I was rarely wrong. I knew everything about relics from hell. He'd been inside for fraud and criminal deception. <laughs> and I could see he was up to his old tricks again. During the interval of his show, I followed him into the gents. He'd taken off his hat and was splashing his face with water. If you don't know it, hell is on West Bay in Grand Cayman. It's well known for a patch of black limestone formations created by salt and lime deposits over 24 million years ago. It's a top tourist attraction with a small post office with an effigy of the devil outside and uh, tacky gift shops selling devil dolls with pitchforks, which I gave a wide berth to. 
But I did sink a few drinks and meet some local ladies at Club Inferno. A lively hotspot where I spent most of my free time. <laughs> Boy, can those women dance. Their hips are... Well, they're, they're mesmerising. <laughs> well, I can't describe it to you. You'd have to see it for yourself. But they're hypnotic. I could see a tiny earpiece behind his ear. The one he kept his hat slanted over. And not knowing I was there, he adjusted the mic he had hidden inside his cravat. I caught on to what he was up to. He had an accomplice feeding him information about the relics. My way of repaying any lady I was lucky enough to share my bed with was to give her an ancient relic, which I told her was worth a fortune, on the understanding that she was never to sell it. It would be kept as a memento of our evening together, and only she would have the knowledge that it was a priceless artefact. And I would tell them to pass it on to someone after they depart this earth. They all fall for it. <laughs> and they can't thank me enough for the priceless artefact that has pride of place in their home. I remembered he had a photographic memory from our time together inside. He could look at anything. Pictures, words, then store them until needed. <laughs> I remember once he read a chapter of the Bible and after 20 minutes recited it word for word. <laughs> this could be a lucky break for me, him being at the hotel. It was nothing but a replica of a relic found at a nearby site during a famous dig some years ago. <laughs> I can't wait to get out of this prison of a hotel. I've had enough of it. I'm fed up to the back teeth of the hordes of tourists. Bloody Americans coming in on excursions from their cruise ships and shouting in their overexcited voices, I'm in hell and you had end up here. Or something just as stupid as you walk into the hotel. And me having to sit there with a polite smile on my face, as if I hadn't heard it all before, and saying, Enjoy your time in hell, madam. Everything you want is here. Don't be shy. We cater for every whim. You can do what you like here. Yeah, time for me to get out. Escape. Little do they know, I have a box full of these ancient relics. I always make sure I bring enough with me to give to all the ladies on my travels who I meet and I'm lucky enough to charm into bed. Time for a little confrontation of sexy Rexy. I'm going to tell him I'll expose his money spinning scam if he doesn't stick to his promise and repay me for services rendered. The fact that the plastic piece of rubbish is phallic shaped is uh, lost on them. <laughs> He's knee deep in money anyway. The way he shows off and throws it around sickens me. Can't wait to see more of the world though. Instead of being stuck inside this hellhole. Life is for living, I say. You've got to have a bit of fun along the way. No more. Money worries. No more pandering to rich Americans looking down their noses at me. Sexy Rexy. You're going to be my passport to a new heavenly life. 